Give me my pleasure, Drizzy. Hey, what's up, y'all, man? This is Disorderly Conduct, man. Craig Stewart, your king of content. I got my brother with me, Harlem Wilson. See, y'all thought I was bullshitting. <laughs> y'all thought I was playing. Y'all thought the Craig wasn't going to come through. He wasn't going to bring out the best interview I'm going to have the goddamn me so far. Listen, man. My brother right here, he been handling this business. He been on this grind. He a positive black man that's out here every day working hard, just like me. And I got him on my motherfucking show because he my nigga. So... Holla, man, talk to the people, man. It's early on a Sunday morning, it's man. Early. It's early on a <laughs> I got good you out here. Sunday, man. I got you out here on a Sunday, man. What I, what I tell you, I'm coming, man, I appreciate you coming through, bro. I appreciate Real you. Real talk, I appreciate you. You're coming through, chopping it up with me for a little bit, man, and, and, and just taking time out your day and supporting your brother, man. Real talk, man. I'm glad to be here, man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hold on, let me make sure I share this shit. I want everybody to make sure they got my man. Hey, my man in this. Man. So happy to be here. On a good ass Sunday, y'all. Good ass Sunday. There we go, here we go. Alright, I got that shit out the way. <laughs> two years ago today, man. Two years talk, ago. Talk, talk, tell them what's tell them what's going on, man. Hey, it's two years ago. We're having a celebration, damn. We're drinking straight shots of water out here in this bitch. Damn it. Tell them, man, two years ago today, what happened? Two years ago today, y'all, uh, I stopped smoking them damn cigarettes, man. man Gotta give, put them down, baby. Gotta put them down. Give my man <laughs> some um, motherfucking applause, man. That's probably one of the best decisions I ever made, man, was to stop smoking cigarettes. You really don't know how much harm they do to you until you stop smoking them. I know they feel good. They're great after meals and, and you know, with beer. I, I feel it. I miss them. But some things really ain't for you, baby. And you save so much money. I did the calculations last night. I think I'm going to save at least two and a half stacks since not smoking cigarettes. Now, I don't know where it went. I don't know where it went. But it got saved, man. So, yeah, it's a celebration, man. Real good. If you having problems smoking cigarettes, man, all I can say is take a day at a time. Um, Talk to them, man. We inspiring folks on this good Sunday. Put their energy towards something else. You feel what I'm saying, man? It ain't nothing like being in good health, y'all. Like my boy Shirt say, health and wealth, baby. Health you know and what wealth. I'm saying, man? Health Shout out to my wealth. nigga Clue. This is what it's all about, baby. You got to feel good. You only get one body. You need to take care of it, man. I'm telling you. Man, that would tell me why I've I been... I finally, man, made a decision like two and a half months ago. Where I, it was Friday, bro. I woke up and was like... I'm done smoking black and mad. I was like, literally just had to stop. I couldn't tell myself I'm going to cut back here. Man. I'm going to cut back there. Because I know if I did that, I wasn't going to be taken serious and I wasn't going to stop it. Man, two and a half months, no smoking black and mad. Still smoke my weed, man. Listen. Yeah, hey, 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 we're not perfect. <laughs> <laughs> we ain't perfect. We Listen. didn't come here for that. <laughs> we talking about <laughs> that tobacco. Leave that shit alone. For real, man. But. Real talk, man. It like you said, like you told me when I started, man. You said you gonna get it stronger every day, and every day, man. I feel like I've been getting stronger with with not smoking. I can breathe again. Congratulations! I caught myself, man. man finding myself where I was. I couldn't breathe. Couldn't breathe. Blood pressure was high. Just eating shit just to be eating, eating shit, bro. Just not even <laughs> no reason to be eating shit. I'm just around here eating shit. Hot chips, hot Cheetos, bags of hot chips. I'm just. Just killing myself. That, no drive, no motivation to do shit, bro. Man. Just letting life pass me by, and I, I finally said, man, I, I, I gotta change something. I got, I gotta do some, some else different, man. Because the path that I'm going down, I'm showing my son the self destruction without even telling him putting a gun to his head or something like no. that, man. I want him growing up, you know, just seeing me eating cheeseburgers. I want him to see me out. You know, doing interviews with my boy Harlem, <laughs> man, chopping it up, living life, working out, drinking water, drinking because it's good for you. <laughs> man, I ain't had no sodas. I, I'm listening. I'm not finna sit here and lie to you, Harlem. Matter of fact, let's talk about uh, cheat days, man. Man, cheat days. <laughs> it's what I live for. People think, man, you gotta you, you gotta go on this uh, diet and you just can't have nothing. You don't. I, and it's really, I don't feel like it's like that. I feel like a good cheat day is, is necessary. What you think? Uh, cheat days are not only necessary, they're vital, man. Because right. ain't 
Nobody. I don't care. You can go on YouTube and see the most in shape person, six packs cut up and all that. They gonna have their cheat days, baby. We human. You we know human. what I'm saying? Don't. If you're trying to lose weight, depriving yourself is the wrong way to go. I agree. Use cheat days as a reward system, man. Me personally, I go 28 days on a good ass diet. You know what I'm saying? So I'm on my best behavior. I'm working out, drinking my water, doing everything. Them last two days out the month. That's mine, because I earned it. You know what I'm saying? It. It's not detrimental to me. And also, even if you are on a good diet and you fuck up, everybody fuck up, baby. It ain't, you human. Don't let that one day ruin a whole month, three weeks, two weeks of work. You good, start over tomorrow, man. Enjoy your meal. Don't let that bring you down. That's the biggest battle with losing weight is your mental. Everything else you can kind of deal with, but fighting yourself and being like, damn, I done messed up. I done, Hey, salads all week. Now I done right. had me a double double. I don't know how to how to feel. Hey, it's all love, man. Use that as motivation. Get back on track. Be better. So, man. Okay, talk to me about you before you know you started getting into to the into the <laughs> into the weight loss, man. Tell it, cause you know people don't. You know everybody yeah. don't know. Uh, everybody don't know. I'm, this gonna go around the world, goddamn. This not just here, yeah. damn. This going. World, Viral. Man. I want my man. I want everybody to be inspired by my man. Cause if he can lose 100 goddamn me pounds, goddamn. How, exactly how much did you lose? 135. Right 100 now. and motherfucking 35 <laughs> pounds, man. If that ain't an inspiration man. to you, goddamn, to get up and do something. Do something with your life, man. man. How how can it not? But I was at, you know, about you before you started losing weight, man. How, what what was going on, like, man? I'm not gonna lie. At my heaviest was 364. I'm only 5'9 now. I ain't that tall of a man. 364. So I was on my way to 400 pounds easily. But uh, I had been big all my life. You know what I'm saying? I've always been, you know, big kid, big adolescent, big teenager. Uh, what people don't realize, man, is we not only as black people, but as a culture, Western culture, we normalize being overweight. And Ain't nothing wrong with being a little bit over, man. But when you right. can't, I couldn't fit in the restaurant booth. Mm. You know what I'm saying? I like feel you on that. going into places and I can't buy shirts and shit, and I have to get my shirt in there, man. You know, you you can have the most self-esteem in the world, man. Mean. But when you go through things like that, or you can't fit through certain doors, or you can't sit in certain cars, man, mm -hmm. it, it fucked with you. And my diet was so terrible. I remember I woke up one day when I was about 21, 22, and uh, four in the morning, I just woke up. I smashed like a whole 12 piece of fries, nigga. Like, just wings. No reason, because I was up and hungry. And then going back to sleep on that, man, and just constant sodas and Kool-Aid and things like that. But it was only because I made my I made myself seem like that was normal. It's okay to eat all that shit. Because I was already big, so it didn't matter. But the thing about being big right. is, you get bigger. Right. When I left high school, I was at right at 300. When I started trying to lose weight in 2013, I graduated in 2008, 2013, I was 364. Had I let that keep going, probably be 400 pounds. You know what I'm saying? In the worst health, man, my blood pressure was high, my knees hurt, my joints, all that, bro. Like, and what really popped it off as far as the weight loss thing, man, was my, my grandmother passed in 2013, uh, or 12, one of them. And when we went back to her house, I mean, I'm talking about family I ain't seen in years. You know, you be like, damn, everybody here is cool and everything. Boy, you ain't missing no meals, is you? Right. Damn, yeah. First thing they say. You ain't even talk about Mother Dear yet. You want to talk about me. Right. <laughs> you ain't even. You just married her. Okay. And that, and that shit got to me, man. Not only that, but like having to miss out on certain shit. My self-esteem, especially at that time, man, was not where it should have been. So I would miss out on social events because I'm like, man, I don't want to be. I don't want to be. I don't want to be the biggest nigga in the in a group, you know what I'm saying? And like I said, having to go to restaurants and we out to eat and everybody else can fit in the booth and I gotta get a, a chair pulled up to the side. Man, shit like this. So I was like, okay. I've tried to lose weight before. But now I felt like it was either gonna happen now or it was never gonna happen. I don't have a lot of time. I'm a young black man. Yeah, yeah. A young black man in bad health does not have a lot of time on this earth. You preaching. You man. feel what I'm saying? Yeah. So I took it upon myself, hey, I didn't even start off like, I went three days a week, 30 minutes at a time. Just changed my eating habits a little bit. And I was still eating terrible food, but then those first six months, I lost 50 pounds. And that was not being serious with me. Right. You feel what I'm saying? And then when I finally went like, 
okay, this shit can be right. done. When you lose, when you lose any amount of weight, man, I don't give a damn if you lost three pounds right. this week. It make you, you, you know, give you that. You feel yeah, <laughs> right. right. I don't need to starve myself. You feel what I'm saying? It's possible, bro. So when I, when I start dropping, like, I was wearing five and six X shirts, like, mm. big as shit. Mm. And when I can start going to three X's, hold up, right. man. I can find pants in the store. <laughs> but, you know what I'm saying, man? It's a, it's a lifestyle change, man. It's it makes you feel better change. and you function better, man. Like, a sound body is a sound mind. I, I live, agree with you on this. I live by that. I agree with you If on your this, body brother. is not in a good shape as far as, I'm not even talking about you having six-pack of average mm. shit, because folk, people be having all that shit and ain't even healthy. Right. Y'all. I'm talking about as far as you feeling good, waking up, being able to move, run a mile, and come back and chill out. You know what right. I'm saying? It's nothing like being in good health and it helps your mind work. We live in a world where everything is designed to heal you, baby. So the only thing you control in this world is your health. You can't control your, your house, your car, none of that. Somebody can come and get all that. You're right. But your health is the one thing you take care of, man. You actually own that. So you owe it to yourself. Fuck it, I need to be the best I can, man. I probably ain't gonna never have a six pack. Right. But damn it, I used to be 300 pounds. Now I'm 236 in here. You know what right. I'm saying? Working on it every day, getting better. I know what I used to be, man. Don't right. think about where you're trying to go. Don't think about where you're at. Because you're always going to be stuck there. If you always. Focus, man. Man. You better. Listen, man. My boy is dropping straight <laughs> game on y'all right now. If you tuned in, like, share, comment on this shit. Listen, I don't even understand. I, don't, I, I can't even... This is way better than what I expected, guys. <laughs> I knew, I knew it was a reason I needed to talk to you, bro. Because it was just like, it's automatic. It's like you see positive people doing stuff, and people think, oh, he got to have such and such and such and such on his show. No, I just want real people on my show, man, that, that's actually out here doing something positive. They can put some information out here for y'all. They can, they can grow you, man. They can, that, in, that inspire you to do something. That's what I'm trying to do. That's what this show is about, man. We keep it real. We keep it raw here. And what was the what was the, the, the good, the bad, and the ugly about you, man, going through your weight loss journey as far as... Oh, man. Um, let's you, start with the good. Right. Uh, the good. When you're going through a weight loss journey, man, especially one like I've been through, others have been through, man, when you're losing, even a 20-pound weight difference is a lot, but when you're going through a whole... I lost 135, man, so I done went through stages where I didn't drop no weight for months, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? But the good part about that is what you don't see others do. Right. It was times I felt terrible. I wake up in the morning and be like, man, I've been doing this shit for months and I ain't got no, my shirts ain't getting no mm -hmm. smaller or nothing. And you talk to somebody and be like, boy, you looking good. Mm -hmm. I know where you used to be at, things like that, man. And like I said, I used to wear size 50 jeans, man. Size 50, 52 uh, if it was if the jeans were small enough. I'm sitting at a 40 right now, man, and I'm kind of sagging in them. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like being able, like I said, to go buy shirts out the store. I ain't got a man. Do you have this in the back of the right. big ass tent size? You know what I'm saying, man? Being able to fit, I could fit in a two door Honda now. <laughs> I couldn't do that. I couldn't do a two door Honda before, but I could do uh, it now. Hey, uh, man, but. Just like I said, being able to, to see it happen. And some days you're not gonna see it grow, but other people seeing you grow will help them grow. You don't know how many people done wrote me, asked me, seen me what out in the store, and be like, hey man, I done seen what you done did. Can you can you help you me help out? Me Cause up. I'm trying, you know what I'm saying? And being able to be a somebody to look at you and be like, when you think you're not doing shit, and somebody look at you and be like, Man, you got everything I kinda want right now. Can you help me out in my situation, man? That's ain't nothing like feeling good. Now the bad it's going to be days where you feel terrible. It's been nice while I've been stood up, cried. Nigga, I done cried tears over this shit because you want it. it. Y'all want it, you and want it get it hard. You know what I'm saying, man? Like, I wake up at 4 in the morning. I go to the gym at 5. I'm there from 5 to 7.30. Loyal, you know boy, every saying? morning I see. God <laughs> damn it, y'all. <laughs> y'all like, follow my boy on Snapchat, man. He on Snapchat. At Snapchat, Snapchat, Harlem man. underscore screw you with two O's, baby. Screw you. Two O's. You Daily get, inspiration, man. man. And Daily I'll be on inspiration. There. It's just, and, and the bad, man, like I said, you're going to have days where you gonna have days where you don't feel like you're doing shit. You probably mm -hmm. gonna feel you probably gonna feel like you're bigger than you started. It's a mental game, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Like I'm telling y'all, if you're trying to lose weight, quit cigarettes, do whatever you want to in this life, man. All this shit is hard. It's not impossible. It's two different things. It's it's gonna be days where it's gonna get to you. Yep. 
Ain't nothing wrong with shedding tears, man. Be in your mood, have your little piss party, whatever. But that next day or within a few hours, you need to get back on your grind. Cause you ain't got time to waste being sad about your situation, baby. Either you're gonna improve it or you're gonna sit there and let yourself stew in it. Now, uh, we did the good, the bad, the ugly. <laughs> <laughs> the ugly, man. Um, you know, just like with anything, if you're growing out your hair, anytime you're going through stages of transition, it's gonna be times where you don't feel too good about your body image, man. Especially when I was going through from like my 300s going down to my 250s, man. I had skin every damn way. It's all type of skin action. Uh, that and just having to keep yourself motivated, man. It's hard motivated. to keep yourself motivated every day. That was one of my questions. Staying it's motivated. It's hard the to stay motivated, man. But when you you gotta look, it's not. You're going through this like you're not just living for you, baby. Some of y'all got kid Craig. You got, you know yeah. what I'm saying? If you got little ones or you got family you take care of, they looking at you. They, they looking, looking at you. You, you don't even see it. They, they looking right at you. They looking at you, man. You don't know who you a source of inspiration for. So when them times when they get ugly, or somebody may say, motherfucker, you've been working for months and you mm -hmm. ain't lost shit. Take it all. It's all love, yep. man. It ain't nothing, ain't nothing better in this life than having somebody say something negative to you and you proving them wrong. Because a lot of folks, and I ain't going to brag like that, but a lot of folks said some shit about my situation when I used to be bigger. And now those same folks coming back and asking me questions. What's going on? You feel what, what, you what I'm saying? Right. So it's going to be hard times, baby. Hard don't mean impossible. Remember that, man. For real. You got any advice on some diets for folks? People out there struggling with some or something uh, you can give them? Uh... Yeah, I do. Let me, let me. Got the pasta white going. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, diets, man. Diets. Diets are not as hard as you think they are. Right. Um, it's the difference between limiting yourself and restricting yourself. Mm -hmm. uh, have fun with it, man. It's all kinds of diets out there. If you're looking to lose a whole lot of weight, one diet I recommend is called ketogenic. It's K-E-T-O-G-E-N-I-C. You can just type in keto on Google. And it's a high-fat, uh, low-carb diet. So if you used to like potatoes and rice and shit like that, that's out the window. That's out the window. Ain't none of that. But, you know what I'm saying? You can have high fat meals. So, man, I've been eating like, I'm losing weight eating bacon, baby. Eating bacon, huh? Eating, <laughs> eating bacon and eggs, baby. It's all types of diets out there, paleo diets, things like that. Now, if you're just trying to hop into it, what I tell people when you first start off, eat your colors, man. The more vegetables mm -hmm. on your plate, the more fruit, things like that, you're good. Um, some of us can't shake, you know, potato chips and junk food and shit yep. like that. Nutrition facts on the back of shit will save you. If it's a serving size of two whatever, eat half of one. Right. Don't deny yourself, man. Sometimes I've been telling you gotta, that's what you gotta do, man. I <laughs> you told gotta, myself, <laughs> you, you ain't gotta have a double cheeseburger. You, you can have a single, single cheeseburger. Not, you ain't gotta get the small, <laughs> the big fry, get the small fry. You ain't gotta get the Route 44 <laughs> slushy. You ain't got you get to. Get the small one. That's, <laughs> That's really all it's about, man. If you just cut back half of what you're doing, you'll drop some weight. You will drop some weight. You uh, will definitely drop some weight. Matter of fact, like my sister, man, congratulations to my sister. She done lost about 21 pounds and more. And all she done was start drinking sodas and things and just change her diet, man. Sodas. Sodas. Sodas would hurt you, bro. If you can, I don't approve of diet sodas either. Yeah. If, you don't, if you want something to drink and you want to diet, Crystal Light, things like that, you Crystal can mix in water. It's better for you. It ain't the best, but it's better than eating or uh, drinking that sugary ass, mm. whatever, bro. I'm telling you, just take it easy, man. Don't rush yourself with this shit. I'm going on four years working out. You know what I'm saying, man? As far as losing losing weight and trying to be better, it's a process, man. And if you rush it, all you're going to do is probably fall flat on your face. Now, you can get up and make yourself better, but sometimes some people ain't strong enough to take that loss and come back man take your time with the shit you didn't get big overnight you didn't put that weight on you know what i'm saying between babies and bad boyfriends right. and whatever, <laughs> your job done stretched you out you put that yeah. shit on you know what i'm saying it's gonna take a while to get off it's probably gonna take longer than you did to put it on just work at it man please just work at it y'all the shit ain't impossible i'm True. telling you man <laughs> have you lost any friends behind Losing or have you gained any new friends behind? Man, losing weight or what? I can't. I can't say that I lost friends. If I have lost friends like that, I can't truly say they was a friend to begin with. I don't you have no names off the top of my head. I wouldn't I do that. No, yeah, I understand that. Saying, yeah, but, I'm not trying. No, we ain't putting nobody on. But <laughs> we're not doing no. that. <laughs> 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 I ain't gonna put nobody on. But, but you know, if they, if they, 
especially with the, the how long how long this took if they seen me in that position and couldn't see themselves to be a friend enough to stick around i don't know if i really want them around That's true. you know what i'm saying but i done gained a whole lot of friends man like i said i, you know, I work at the library right. so i'm in the community and people done seen me go from where I was at to where I am now and come up to me, man, you look, let me tell you. I ain't, <laughs> never, I ain't never seen nobody do that. And you know, it's when I was doing my weight loss shit, I didn't think nothing of it. I thought it was just me, but man, this is something a lot of people struggle with. Right. You know what yeah. I'm saying? And to see somebody go from being like I was morbidly morbidly obese. I was almost four hundred pounds to going to be in and I'm still overweight now, but it's not to where it's affecting my right. health as far as breathing and blood mm. pressure and my heart working hard and shit like that, man. You you get better as a person, you know what I'm saying, man. I didn't gain more friends' support. People watching, people watch me every morning, cuss them out, and tell them it's gonna be a good right. ass day. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, they start their day off with me, so I didn't gain a whole lot of friends' support, man. When you doing something positive, the people that's not supposed to be in life gonna weed themselves out. Right. And the people that you need gonna come in man. and ingratiate themselves in your life and, man. and put themselves in your life, man. That's what it's all about, man. I talk about giving back and trying to, you know, as far as this podcast, this anybody that's, that 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 does anything positive, man, I'm trying to have them on this this show, man, because they need to see positive images of black men, black people doing positive stuff. Because all I see when I turn on the news, man, man. they got us in handcuffs or, or dead on the ground. And it's just like repeated. I'm finally, I'm I was, I'm finally at the point where I'm tired of seeing, and I feel like I, I had to step out here and do something. And starting with my family, starting with my friends, starting with the people I know, and, and building that. And niggas think they gotta go out of state or run away. And I'm like, everything we need is right here. There's so many people like you. There's so many people with talent that's here that can motivate, that can inspire people to get off their ass and, and, and do something with their life. And that's what I'm trying to do, man. That's that's what I'm trying to do. And let me get your opinion on this, man. Okay. Now we finna talk about the community. Mm. What you think need to happen, man, for us to 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 come together and, and stop all this bullshit? Man, uh, honestly, and I talked about this with somebody at the library this week, an older African American gentleman that's seen the transition of like you know our communities, man. Mm-hmm. If you ask me, Craig, man, I think we lost our value as a people because we've been we've been downgraded so much. You know what I'm saying, man? It was a point in time where we didn't need nobody's help with nothing. We had our own banks everything <laughs> and then they got to after and I know they took that away from us you feel what I'm saying right. took that away from us and kind of left us on our own but we still the infrastructure we was built on man has been devalued so much you know what I'm saying it's more people that's rather they would rather have the government step in and help them than us try to help out to each other man and we it ain't nothing to kill a nigga to some people it you know what nothing. I'm saying it's nothing and I when you look on the news what do you see man several black men being killed you know look at chicago you know yep. what i'm saying man we lost our value as a people i feel and the only way we can get that back is to we got to distance ourselves man we don't need that help we yep. got anything that any other race can do and i'm not making the race thing i'm just saying man. Uh, speak the truth on me. Hey. black folks we already know right. we're not in the best of shape right now it's not really speak a good time for us not only health wise but as far as our community Everything that other folks can do, we can do ourselves, man. If you sell drugs or whatever, I'm not knocking you, baby, but I know that you got to keep books and ledgers and shit. Yep. You can make a business out of that, man. You know what I'm saying, it's man? Real, we man. use our talents in the wrong places. And sometimes it's the right places, it's just the wrong avenues. Yep. You know what I'm saying? It's, it ain't nothing that we can't do as people that we can't do for ourselves, man. I just, that and, um, Family, bro. Family structure is so important. I don't yep. give a damn what nobody say. All that. <laughs> you can be independent if you want to. And I'm not knocking ladies either, man. They programmed us like that to say that you don't need a man. You can raise that boy by yourself. Right. What you need a family? Mm. Man, you don't need them. Let me go take your pops and lock them. You know what right. I'm saying? You Boy, you preaching right you now. Need, <laughs> you dropping game on the You need right the now. whole family. It take, <laughs> it take a village to raise a child. Our village is fucked up, y'all. Mm. It's fucked up, man. You need everybody, man. Dads, you out there watching, hey, you are the most important thing in a child's life. Everybody going to always love mama. That's spoken for. Right. Daddy got to cement his place, man. So be a man. You know what I'm saying? Take them kids out to the park, man. You ain't got to go chill with your niggas. You ain't got to go hit, hit the club if you still own that kind of shit. You know what I'm saying, man? Handle your business. Your kids need you. 
it's so easy to be misled as a young child, man. You don't know who your kid encounter at school or whoever that could be seen as a fire figure to them. Yep. So you may end up having a child to see you as daddy, but then may go and see the OG somewhere else, and they that's they pops. You know what I'm saying? Everybody got to come together, man. Fuck all that. Man, she gonna do her, I'm gonna do me. Right. Make things work. I ain't gonna say, I ain't gonna say be miserable. Right, don't be miserable. Don't be man. miserable. But a lot of these petty ass arguments, man, and this social media and shit that y'all letting get in the way of raising some kids to be effective, let that shit go, man. It's keep just, your business off social <laughs> media, business, man. We don't the, wanna <laughs> be in your business. Cause don't nobody really care we except don't. you at the end of the day. And that's just being real <laughs> with you. That's just the truth. Don't nobody care. You just putting your business out there for everybody to talk about it and don't nobody really just give a damn. Yeah, it's, it's, it's it's really your, you just putting your shit it's out simple, there. simple, man. Don't, let, don't get caught up in the world is what I'm saying, y'all. It's, it's bigger than Facebook. It's bigger than Snapchat, man. Yep. You got to make your impact, man. There's so many lost kids out here. I work at the library, baby. Y'all don't know what these kids come back and tell us, what we got to witness them doing. You mm. think they never had parents at all, man. I just, we need to stop acting like things okay. I agree. And it's not, man. It's Please. not. We need to go back to the ways of, I don't know how many people still have family reunions. I don't know how many people still have, like, Sunday dinners. You nope. know what I'm saying? Don't, don't do it no that. more, bro. Families don't. I remember, man. Being real with you, my family, we used to get together. My grandma, my aunties, uncles, we would all get together on Sunday, man, when I was kids. Link up on Sunday dinner. My grandpa would cook, uh, grandma would cook, or my parents would cook. But we would all get together on Sundays and just chill out and relax together. And we ain't done that, man, in years. Man, because everybody's so occupied with trying to get it by their damn you self and, and not realizing that you need we can everybody. all come <laughs> if you put a thousand dollars and you put a thousand dollars and you put a thousand dollars together that's a family fucking business right there. right there but people don't want to do it because they so focused on they think they got to do it by their damn self chinese folks asians mexicans jews they all got the the, the sense of group economics Man. bro they got it together uh, I was watching a video the other day, Asian woman explaining how her and her uh, family uh, get a business. They don't go to the bank. They don't borrow money from the bank. They all live together. They pull their money Man. together, and then they start a fucking business. And whoever uh, is next in line to get a business after that one started, they put the money together from that business <laughs> and start another, another one. one. And I'm Man. like, why we can't do that, bro? <laughs> how come we cannot do that as a people, and they doing it in our neighborhoods? Man. Chico Hibachi got motherfuckers sold up over here. Uh, sharks fishing chickens sharks on every, every damn corner. Every corner, guys. They in hey. Sherwood, Pine Bluff, <laughs> they every goddamn way. But we can't get businesses in our own neighborhood or people to support the businesses in our and own neighborhood alive, and man. keep them alive because every black business that we lose, man, it's, it, it's hard to get that one back. I'm like, we need all our black businesses in the hood. Most we need. Definitely. I'm going to piss some folks off when I say this, but I'm going to say it. You drive, what is that? What street is that? Where McClellan on? Uh, God Springs. God Springs. You drive your ass down God Springs. You pass McClellan. McClellan looked the same as it did 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. But you go down the damn street, just a mile down the road, you see this big ass, mega ass church that had made additions to the shit. My whole thing with that is, we got churches around here that y'all going to this morning, right now, then probably put your money in, mm -hmm. paid your tithe, then gave that money to. But, hey, none of this is going back into the community, bro. None of this money that we going to spend at church is going back into the community. I'm not hating on churches. If that's what you want to do, you want to do, do that, your do your thing. But realize that you could be putting that money back into your schools, back into programs for the community, community centers, building some shit around here for these kids so we can get them off the street and quit fighting and selling drugs all the damn time man. because it's... it's it's bigger than us. I'm at that age where I realize, man, it's, it's it's bigger than us because I got a son. Man. And I know I got other black men that's growing up like you that's that's gonna have kids. And we gotta get back to 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 loving one another, bro. Uh, loving our ourselves first. Man. We can't love nobody unless we love ourselves. Yeah. And I think that's the whole problem too, bro. Don't know I used to like I told this story before. I used to go to a gas station. I would look at a black man, and if I seen him with dress or saggy pants or whatever, I would be suspect. I'm like, well, you know, you know, you know, well, let me make sure I watch this nigga or man, whatever. You know, man. right, make sure I watch him or whatever. But then I had to check myself and be like, I need to look myself in the mirror and stop looking at 
my brother with fear in my heart, right. with fear on my mind, and be like, that's my brother. I'm not saying you're going to trust every nigga that you run into. <laughs> we gonna, every is like, you don't have niggas that you just can't get along with. Right. But it, give you, give them the opportunity. Right. Give them the, the respect. If you see a woman that you don't know, you know, ho open the door for her. You know, just, it's little stuff that we got to get back to doing to building that the respect, the respect to, for other, one another with each that. other man and, and i feel like that's like you said man that's 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 lost that's that shit all the way gone then <laughs> i don't know if we're gonna get it back man it, i see a lot of a lot of bullshit going on on social media where folks just distracted by everything but doing what they can mm -hmm. up to prosper mm -hmm. being better it's social media is a double-edged sword because and I fuck on, you know, Facebook, Snapchat, that's my shit. I love it, man. But I also know we, I'm not sure how many other races do, but black folks for sure, because that's the people I fool with. I can't speak on other races, y'all. Sometimes we do shit just for social media. And it be the most ignorant, outlandish yep. shit, man. It make us look so bad, baby. And, yep. and I don't like the fake shit to be on there as far as, if you do a good deed, man, do a good deed because you want to. You want to. Don't do a good deed because you can... Get a Upload likes. that shit and get a like <laughs> and get shared around the world, man. That's not from the heart. It's probably, you probably did it in good intentions, man, mm -hmm. but that shit ain't real. It's a lot of, people do good deeds every day that go unnoticed, man. Your work in the world is going to be way more effective than the shit that you put on social media. I agree. Man, it's all about, we need to help each other, bro. And none of us, unless you are a billionaire black person, which there are a few of. And you really, you still black. <laughs> you still so it black. Don't matter. We need to help each other, man. We we probably doing the worst out of all the races out of right now because we just can't. It's all about getting yours and getting mine. Yep. Man. Like you said, ain't no, ain't no group effort, man. This shit crazy. They're trying to destroy us, bro. It, it's like <laughs> it, it's meant to for us to be. They want us to be divided. They yeah. want they like they got they got love and hip hop. Yeah, you, you, you got all these other shows, man. That that. that that portray the image of black women like they ain't shit. But the black women watch this shit. And love and it. And love it. And I can't, love it. I can't fuck with and it. And I'm just like, I can't. It's hard for me to, to, to. I told my girl, I was like, I don't see how you watch this shit. Like, I finally got to the point <laughs> where I was like. You got to leave the room. I got to leave the room, bro. I'm like, I don't see how you watch this shit because it's. You 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 go to work. You a woman that go to work. You you handle your business. You got bills. You pay them. You take care of your business. And how do you look at these women and think that that's... That's what you... And some people idolize that shit. Idolize it, bro. They want to be on Love & Hip Hop. They they, they want to be a, a basketball wife. And they think that that's life. Oh, or, what's, the, or, what's the chick name? Black China. Ah. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you this. If your life goal as a lady is to be anything Black China is as far as her relationships and shit like that, you fucked up, and it's a lot. I don't blame y'all. I do not blame y'all. It's what y'all watch and what people make you think is a standard True. of beauty and accept. All that is some bullshit, man. Ain't no, ain't no man. I'm going to leave that alone. <laughs> don't be like the people you see on TV. God gave you a life for another uh, reason. They chose, or you know, whoever you believe in, because some folks don't believe in God. However you got True. your life force, baby, you wasn't put here to be doing that kind of shit. And you need to find something else to look up to. Some of y'all work harder than half them bitches man, do on there. Man. You putting yourself down because this bitch get to sleep with a nigga that's worth some milk. <laughs> that's it. Let's continue. <laughs> <laughs> Let's continue, damn it. Uh, man, what 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 have you learned about yourself now that I guess you didn't know before you started losing weight and, and and getting yourself together man um that is possible that is possible. it's possible man well let me tell you being being overweight or being extremely big you can have the most self-esteem in the world whatever like i said man you always gonna feel a certain way uh although i'm not the the damn mac daddy you know what right. i'm saying <laughs> i can at least approach women with a certain kind of like you know what i'm saying i'm comp i'm more confident in myself than i was back then not only that People see it. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? People respect you more. But what a lot of folks don't realize, man, our society, we very aesthetic. It's mm -hmm. all about your looks. It's about what you got and what you look like. So when people 
speak, see a larger person, I'm guilty of it myself. He'd be like, damn, what the fuck do you, you know what I'm right. saying? What they do? Or, mm. And look at this fat motherfucker. <laughs> I done seen the yeah. looks, you know what I'm saying? I can walk down now and have people looking at me that see me before and be like, damn, right. you know what I'm saying? It's, I learned a lot. I learned that, for one, it's a mental thing. Anything in life, man. If I can lose 135 pounds, you can do whatever you want to in life. That was some shit, and I'm being so honest with y'all. Losing weight was some shit that I never, never in a million years thought that I could do. And I done this shit with no trainer. I ain't have to pay no mm. extra gym fees or nothing. All I did was pay my monthly dues, go in there, work out. I done did my own research. I learned about my body. I learned about my body type. I learned how I... I counted up calories and shit like that. I put in the work to show myself I can do it. Mm -hmm. If you got a trainer, ain't nothing wrong with that, man. But it's nothing like being able to sit down and be like, I did this shit my damn it. self. I did this from the ground up. From the first pound to the motherfucking last pound, I did this shit from the ground up, man. It's knowing what you're capable of in this life in a place where you can't do that because you're a black man. Right. Are you young? You can't mm -hmm. do that. When you hear so many no's, in this life we live in, and you can tell yourself yes, it's a beautiful feeling. It's a beautiful feeling, yep. man. Being able to know that it's possible. Anything, man. Look at you, Craig. You know, I've no, known each other since back then. You <laughs> man, know what I'm saying, man? Ass, and look how we done grown and what we became into, man. Nobody would have thought this shit mm. back then, but to, to see it, to watch something grow and be fruitful, man, and blossom and be something better than what it was. It's almost like a butterfly effect, you know what I'm saying? I started off as a, a fat caterpillar. I done got somewhere, got my cocoon, I done came out, and I might, my wings ain't fully dry and shit, right. but, but <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I done came out, man, and, and now I'm a whole new person. It's a different world, man. It's a different lifestyle. It's a different feeling, man. Nobody want to wake up and look at themselves in the mirror every day and be like, ugh, mm -hmm. ugh. Right. Nobody wants that, man. So to be able to work on yourself, to be able to work on yourself and have it be effective, it's, it's beautiful. I hope everybody can, man. If you losing weight, help your family lose weight, man. It's yeah. a, they, Cause they gonna do it with you. They gonna, they gonna do, do it with you organic. I promise you. I started eating, changing my ways, and they done follow right behind me, eating fruit, mm -hmm. eating vegetables. And sometimes, out. sometimes it take you to be the catalyst. Gotta know? be. It took me to be the catalyst in my family yep. to have people start looking at themselves like, damn, you know what I'm saying, man. Start with you and work your way out, and it's going to spread around, man. You put in good energy, you're going to get it back. It's not going to always be good days, like I said, but the days that are good, they damn good. Right. And you're going to love it. <laughs> I'm the same way, man. I, I'm like you. I had to, you got to do something. I went to three or four different stores, couldn't find no pants. Yeah, that shit will get you. you know how motherfucking <laughs> humiliating and frustrating that shit was, and I go over here, they got... Plenty of 32, 36s. <laughs> I'm like, God, man. I... <laughs> Having sex with my girl, told her to squeeze them titties, she squeezed my titties. You man. know, you ain't got damn it, hold on. That ain't right. I don't know what you doing. <laughs> Real shit. Like, it, it this happened, shit that man. happened, man, it'll be like, man, you know. And, and losing weight, you know, your sessions get better, you know. We man, grown, we hey. grown, ain't nothing like some good yam action. Hey. Get you some miles in you, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you start smoking them cigarettes, you start running some miles, doing some yep. sit-ups. <laughs> what? Uh, your girl ain't never going to leave, nope. your man ain't never going to leave because you're working on yourself and they can see that, they man. Can that's, see. that's what I'm saying. It affects everything, man. It ain't just about your health, man. Your sex life get better. You start feeling better about the job that you said you was going to quit six fucking yep. months ago. But it's cool now because I can deal you with can it. Deal with you it. know what I'm saying? Like I said, it's, it's a... It's a lifestyle change. It's a lifestyle change, man. I ain't gonna keep it well. Let me, let me make sure I already ran through these. Guys. I mean, it's cool. I know you got things to do, Greg, but I ain't got shit to do. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't got shit to I do. Make sure I done ran through all my questions, man. Nah, because I want to, uh, I had some questions about, uh, screw. Talk to me about Robert Earl Davis, man. man. Yeah. Give me. I'll say this from my what I've learned from my research that I did, man. I feel like screw is it, this just from what I read a few days, man. It's a lifestyle. It's really like it's not just tapes. Like yeah. niggas live this shit. Yeah. Like it's a real deal it's a, lifestyle. It's, it's a culture. It's man. a culture. It's and a I culture. learned that. I was like, it's 
this is a real deal coach talk to me about that man how you so, get into it i started jamming screw now here's some backstory on that rest in peace dj screw baby july okay. 12th was his b-day but let me tell y'all i started jamming screw back in 2002 2003. now screw was a dj down in Houston, Texas. He was born in Smithville, moved to Houston. Um, in about 92, 91, he started making tapes. He was already a DJ in the community. He started making tapes. Uh, now, you got to think, we accepted in hip hop now. As far as rap music, we accepted. Back in the early 90s, they didn't fuck with us. Right. Nobody showed us no love. It was either East Coast or West Coast shit. So, what Screw did was start making these tapes, you know, these mixes. And one of his friends, I believe his name was Toe had the first slow down tape. He was like, man, let me get that shit, but you know, slow it down for him. And it started off with that one tape. Now people hearing this shit, when you first hear screw it, fuck your head up because it sounds like something wrong. You know right. what I'm saying? But it's all the way right. It's a it's a different vibe. It's the South. You know what I'm saying? Early 90s rap music is dance. You know what I'm right. saying? You're moving fast, everything like that. But shit, we from the South, baby. we ain't with all that dancing right. shit. We really don't dance no more. Even when Snap music came through. We had two moves. And right. that was that. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, you know what I'm saying? But with all that, so what Screw did was take this music and he slowed it down, extra bass up in it, but it was all live. And these were all friends and people he considered family, man. Everybody that was just rappers. And this is the time where the South wasn't making no money in the rap game. Mm -hmm. So, putting out these tapes, and he started off just like you. You know, anybody that started off, he just sold 10, 20 tapes. And it started growing and growing. By the time 95, 96 came and 3 in the morning came out, which was his, it was an underground release, but it was his first major release. That shit sold like 500,000 in his first week. Nigga, there was a royalty check on Facebook. You can probably find them on DJ Screw page. $400,000. Wow. Mm. In 95, 96. Wow, yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's, some, it's some a ground mm. up kind of thing, man. This came from nothing, from people saying, man, nobody ever going to listen to this shit. Mm. Nobody will ever, ever Never. ride candy with these ugly ass rims and shit like that. And it blew up, man. But not only that, it's just, it's different, man. I started jamming screw because I ain't gonna lie. Back in, back at Coverdale, I tried to kill myself a couple times. Suicide, really? yeah, yeah, most shit. definitely, most definitely. Huh. You know, I was going through some tough times. Being a big kid like that. And, I, I, and you yeah. know, I was one of the biggest kids in the school. Yeah. So having to deal with that and kids cruel as fuck and mm. not knowing how to deal with it, man. I done had some days, but my first slow song I ever heard was Twister, Overnight Celebrity. Mm. And when I heard this shit, I said, this shit is crazy. I played this song probably about 40 times that night. And it made me feel right. Because mm -hmm. I was still with the current time, but I was at my own pace. You right. know, it slowed down. I get to do whatever I want to do. I can... I can actually hear jamming that and then getting deeper into like the tapes. Now this is a nigga who was doing these tapes from 92. He died in 2000 and put out over 500 tapes. It's 300 you can buy right now and they steady finding tapes 20 years, you know what I'm wow. saying, 20 years later. It made me feel like something was right, you know what I'm saying? This is something that we could truly own. Like putting on them tapes you can hear old outcasts. Lil Kiki, you know what I'm saying, motherfucking UGK before they got big. Mm. This is nothing but grassroots kind of shit, bro. This mm. that's our culture as far as the South is concerned. Everybody's favorite rapper that's on top now, all them can say, man, screw did that. Mm. People sipping drinking shit now, they used to sip that shit way back then. Mm. Everything we're doing now is old as fuck. The only thing I hate about the culture and as far as it is now. It's the drugs, man. Right. Like, you know what I'm saying? We learned our lessons. We done lost so many, so much talent mm. to motherfucking drink, man. Big Mo, uh, Pimp C, Screw, Rest you know what I'm peace. saying? Oh, and Lord. as much, and I love Codeine, y'all. It's a, it's great. I'm not going to lie. It's <laughs> great. I enjoy it. It's especially great with a Sprite remix if you got a Chopper <laughs> one or a Big Blue. But you got to realize, man, that kind of lifestyle, he was staying up for days, making these tapes, drinking this shit. And I'm talking about, they not drinking. Niggas is pouring aces and 20 ounces. They pouring mm. fours and 20 ounces. They got a tape where they put a pint and two liters. <laughs> you know what I'm saying, mm. man? It's just the, 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 I don't like the, the drugs and everything behind it because it could have been so much more. He died in 2000. Steel Tipping came out, what, 01, 02. Yep. He was right there to seeing his dream become something to flourish, right man. And as much as I hate it, 
everybody love you when you're dead. They ain't showed it, man. People in Houston, the Houston Chronicle and other people talk so much shit about his music when he was alive, but when he died and it blew up, now everybody accepted it. You know what I'm saying, man? It's really a tragedy because you work so hard at something and then you die and you can't really realize your dream, man. He really did because everybody was known and everybody wants their stuff screwed and you know what I'm saying, things I like that. But to be, able to, to, be on there. be able to sit back and be like, damn, Started this shit in my motherfucking basement in my house, mm -hmm. and it grew to a motherfucking. They got screw fest, got screw hat man, everything screw. Probably half of y'all favorite songs got a screw, screw, you know, yeah. slow down hook man. It's something that it's a worldwide thing, man. It's all about. He was a selfless person, and all these people who had dreams like me and you probably couldn't. People couldn't think they could rap for shit. Put them on these tapes, and they them blew up and made their own career. Look at little Kiki. Yep. You know what I'm saying, man? Yeah. This talking about we talking about freestyling on tapes back in the day. Wasn't no motherfucking audacity. Wasn't no CD right. players. So everything they doing is it's our story of hip hop. Mm. You know, you know, you got the subway shit in New York with the the beatboxing on the trains and the break dancing in the West Coast with low rides and shit like that. Our music history, man, is that motherfucking screw. And it's just it's just something that moved me, man. It's not for everybody. I know a lot of people don't dig that shit like that, man. But mm. if you, if you feel it and you're real, it's all about moving at your own pace, doing what you want to do, and helping those at the same time, man. The ones that you really consider friends, not people that just come along at night, but folks that's been down, you know mm. what I'm saying, man, and put them in the forefront, man. The screw is a, it's a culture. It's more than the music. It's a lifestyle. If y'all ever get a chance, man, uh, one real good book about that is called Houston Rap. Big ass Houston book. A lot of pictures, it. man. And if you really want a good book about how all this shit started out, especially one of my favorite rappers, Sweet James Jones, Pimp C's Trill Life Story. I recommend everybody, if you're a fan of UGK or rapper in general, we please go get that book. We got it at the library, baby. Just bring your card. We got you. Uh, but yeah, Craig, man, it's a, it's a lifestyle, man. It's in a place where we move so fast, man, I can move slow and be comfortable with it. That's what I learned. That's what I learned about it, man. They move at their own pace. I was said this man... Folks used to drive from all across the world yes. just to get to a tape from this yes. man. I was like, <laughs> it tripped me out. I didn't, I didn't, I'm, I'm learning stuff about Screw that I didn't even know. Like, we used to drive all around the world just to get a tape from this man every time, man. Folks would, they say bootleg his tape, steal his tapes, yeah. and sell them at flea markets and, and stuff flea like markets. that. And he got really upset about that. King's Flea Market in Houston used to have a real bad rep about that, but folks used to drive. Arkansas, Texas, I mean, Louisiana, you know what I'm saying, to come, oh. and, to come get these tapes. And we're talking about this man opened up his doors at nine. He had to move several times because his neighbors couldn't stand this blocks of people. <laughs> blocks. Lined up, jamming this slow down shit, coming out these candy cars and all these speakers <laughs> and shit to come and get a tape from this man. That's that's our culture, bro. That's us because we still do it to this day. It ain't nothing like, and I hate Superficial shit and materialistic shit, but ain't nothing like riding and looking good and you True. got your shit jamming, man. It's it's our history. You right. It's our history, man. I, if you a rapper or whatever, they made the blueprint. It's you can get your music out a whole lot easier now because you got SoundCloud, you got that piff, you got all this shit. Remember that none of this was back in the day. Right. So all these people were just selling tapes out their trunk. And if we had to go back to them days, some of y'all niggas wouldn't last a minute in the rap game. Mm -hmm. But to sell out your trunk and have hand-to-hand -hand transactions, you actually meeting the people and growing your fan base. And it went from 100 to 200 tapes to selling. Lil Flip said he's seen Screw sell 50,000 tapes out his trunk in one Sunday. Wow. And we sell on these at $8 a pop. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Wow. $8 a pop. So you coming home with rat, man, they made the blueprint. It's just, it's our culture, man. It's and our I culture. represent this shit every day. I'm not even from Texas, but it's the, it's the love that we show because we about as slow as they is in Texas, you know what I'm saying, man? Everything just so chill. It's it's all love, man. So, did screw music keep you from committing suicide? It did because it gave me a different way of thinking, man. Before before I started jamming screw, which is crazy because I was a big Lincoln Park fan back then, mm. and you know. Uh, the lead singer, yeah, just, uh, I, I, forget, I know, that, yeah, he, he, did, he just committed suicide. You know huh. what I'm saying? I, I wasn't sure about myself. You know what I'm saying, man? Mm -hmm. And not being sure of yourself, especially at that young age, that's why I said kids need fathers because you don't know 
them vital teenage age, man, they need all the support they can get because mm -hmm. you don't know what them kids going through by the time they leave your house and go to school and come back. Right. And I tried to take myself out of the game because that was the only way I could see everything to stop. But listen to Screw, and when I bought my first Screw tape, which is Banger Behind Tent, I believe that's chapter 26, and I heard it click on. And it just made sense. It was like, damn, I don't have to be like everybody else. Mm -hmm. I can do my own shit and still be relevant, but be totally apart from everybody else. That's why I never mind being an outcast because Screw made me feel comfortable with some shit like that. You right. know what I'm saying? Being able to jam this music and I'm riding down the street now. And folks look at me like I'm got all kinds <laughs> of this shit. But I'm being my own world because right. I'm, I'm comfortable with myself, man. It gave mm -hmm. me a chance to screw music really he would take these songs and slow them down and his favorite parts are things that you should really hear in the song and them certain lyrics he'll repeat them about four or five times so you can really get you know what i'm saying we listen to these songs and especially now the beats sound good mm -hmm. but ain't no lyrics no lyrics ain't no substance it. in it so you're hearing a bunch of bullshit, and that's why everybody out here on some you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. but music back then man you know it was something you could feel, and it was something that was all done by hand. wasn't no damn Serato, wasn't no Q points or nothing. This was all hands mm -hmm. working. So you hearing somebody hard work with this music somebody else made. It was watching the community grow, watching the culture be born before your eyes, man. And it's, it made me feel comfortable. Like I said, listen to that slow down shit, hearing that bass hit. I could understand it. Life was moving too fast mm -hmm. for me, and Screw helped me to be like, okay, you can still do your thing sit back, slow it down, look at it for a second. If you got to, go back over it, look at it again. But just take your time. Take your time. And that's the big lesson I got. Take your damn time, man. <laughs> Listen, man. I, don't, I ain't got shit else to say. I, I really don't, man. I really, <laughs> this has been great, man. This has been so great, man. I want you, what's what's one thing, man? Where, well, I mean, I'm gonna got two more questions. Okay. Where do you see yourself five years from now? I asked that to everybody I interview. Where do I see myself five years from now? Hopefully, man, I'm kind of torn right now because what I really want to do, my passion is to be a DJ. Anybody mm -hmm. who know that, man, I love to mix music. Oh, um, cool. That's my shit. That's like, that's my cool. passion, man, it's to, it's to DJ. So I will hope within the next five years, I can make that a full-time thing. As much as I love the library and things mm -hmm. like that, you know, everybody got something they want to do. Right. We yeah, work jobs because yeah, right. we need to. <laughs> we work jobs because right. we need to, but I would love to be a DJ. But DJing full-time, man, and being able to just really enjoy life. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I know it's people our age right now that got it made, Craig, man. And they started when they was younger. Young. So for us starting now, if we to start right now and work on whatever we need to do, by the time five years hit, that'll be what? My math off, so I'm not even going to do that. Hey. <laughs> uh, uh, 30, 30 something. All right. Uh, we'll be set, man, and really enjoying life for what it is, man. I just, I want to be able to be in good health. And if I'm still here, if I have kids, see my kids, I just want to be able to be here to enjoy it, baby. Bullshit involved, too. I'm but just to be that. here and be like, damn, five years later, you know what I'm saying? I remember this day, five years later. Yeah, yeah. Just to be here and be in good health, man, and DJ. And hopefully do something to help out the community. Because we need it like a motherfucker. Need it, bro. We need that. Man. I like I said, man, I I I ain't got shit else to say. <laughs> shit. Man, well, my last question was. Uh, that's it, man. I ain't finna keep it long, <laughs> man. I, I'm done. <laughs> shit. I gotta go home and chop this up. I'm finna blast this put this back out here man there's so much game you just dropped on these folks they they really don't even realize and i really do appreciate you man coming through and and, and sitting down with me and <laughs> chopping it up and supporting me bro because you don't understand man there's a lot of folks already that don't want to see me prosper that don't want to see me do this like they they they, they don't have you you think it's your friends or your family that, that got your back all the way sometime and and you see who had your back when okay. when you trying to do something. Like it was cool when I wasn't doing shit. Right. But now that I'm trying to do something, it's like I done had so many people just try to hold me back already, but I'm just like I'm 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 pushing through. Okay. I'ma keep going, man. I, I this like you said, it ain't gonna be overnight. Like you said, four years we're losing weight shit. It's gonna take some time, <laughs> it's gonna man. Some time, it's gonna take baby. some time, but I jumped out here and I, I got my feet on the ground. I got my feet wet and 
shit, I'm gonna fall, I'm gonna have bad days, but I know I gotta keep going and make this shit happen. Man. And that's what I'm gonna do, bro. And if I can help you in any way, man, because I'm gonna have you back on this motherfucker again. I'm already telling you, I'm gonna have you back. I'm gonna have a studio, I'm gonna get this shit legit. But right now, I appreciate you coming through, bro, and seeing that real shit. You I'm just don't even understand, here. man. You just don't even understand, man. Hey, man, I'm finna sign up over here. Appreciate y'all tuning in with me, man. This disorderly conduct came back with my brother, Harlan Wilson. Man, on some real shit, we gonna have to hang out, man. <laughs> Off camera, Most like bro, like, like just like, real on some chill shit. Working out, cause I see you. I'm trying to. I'm like, I see Harlan. I gotta go hit the hit the gym with Harlem <laughs> shit. What that nigga be doing? I'm trying to get like Harlem. Come on, shit. That nigga be working out every day. All right, I'm just. Gotta find time, man, you oh, know, with know. these jobs and shit, it's just the timing, but like I said, man, thank you, brother, for coming through once again, man. I'm glad to be here. Thank you for having me. Shout out your Facebook, Snapchat, all this shit, man. One more time, bro. Facebook, Harlem Wilson. I'm the man with the smile. I'm in there. Uh, <laughs> Instagram, I believe it's Harlem underscore screw you with two O's. Snapchat, Harlem, H-A-R-L-E-M underscore screw you two O's, baby. You'll find me on there. Y'all follow my man, man. Once again, man, with one like, one share, and a one view, man, I can grow this shit with y'all's support. We building this. This is Doily Conduct, man. I appreciate y'all. Y'all have a good Sunday, man. Thank you.